<laughs> flashbacks, flashbacks. <laughs> Welcome in the name of the Christ. Welcome to this place of retreat, this place of refuge, this place of worship, this place of wonder. It is indeed good when we gather as God's people to celebrate our faith with each other. And a warm good morning to each of you. Well, it's a cool good morning, isn't it? A little cooler than what we've been used to. Uh, so a warm welcome to each of you. To those who are sharing with us um, on Facebook Live, we certainly welcome you as well in our midst. And we hope that you'll feel very much a part of this worship time this morning as if you were here. This morning, our sympathy goes out to um, Errol um, Burgoyne and Sandra Weeks on the death of uh, Errol's uh, mother, who died this past, uh, past week. So our thoughts and our prayers are certainly with Errol and Sandra as they mourn, and the family uh, as they mourn the loss of a loved one, a mother and, and, um, and whatnot. So our thoughts are with that family. Just a few of the announcements. Um, first, after worship, there's a time of fellowship out back. Uh, yeah, out, out here, we're going to have some hot dogs and other stuff. So, uh, coffee and tea, so please stay and join us. This is the welcoming back to our Sunday school. Welcome back! <laughs> and uh, when you go out, take your coat with you, because I think there's stuff going to be happening outside that's planned, so you might want to do that. So, anyway, um, just a f yeah, let me see here. My morning got s really started off kind of rocky. I put my gown on backwards, and I was trying to fumble with it to put it on, and it's like, why isn't that working? And anyway, so uh, that's, that might be a, a precursor to how the morning is going to unfold with my leadership and worship. Uh, just uh, there's not many announcements really. Um, just a reminder that our puzzle and book exchange is still happening out here. And as the night, the days get shorter, nights get longer. Puzzles uh, come out and uh, and different things. So please avail yourself of that. We're always looking for, or George is always looking for pop can pulls. So uh, and I think he's been uh, he's getting good response uh, from that. So. Uh, yeah, so he's got some over there. So keep them coming in. It's to a good cause. Um, also, the Camp Abiquit fundraiser dinner. Camp Abiquit is a church uh, youth camp up in Augustine Cove. And uh, you're asked to reserve Saturday, September 28th at 6 p.m. for the Camp Abbey fundraiser dinner. And it's written in, in your bulletin if you'd like to go and support that particular venue. Also, Central Queen's takeout fall supper. I was a little leery to even mention it this morning, after. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, noted. It's it's in November second, so it's a it's a good ways away, uh, and the notes are there. And if you would like to um, uh, uh, for tickets, you can contact your leader uh, or Debbie Ling, and Debbie's number is in the bulletin. If you might like to get a ticket for that, and again, it's a takeout. It's a takeout supper. There are other announcements in the bulletin. I trust that you will have a look at those and be about those uh, items that, uh, that uh, you need to be about. Uh, are there any other announcements that need to be shared? Yes. Anniversary is on Tuesday. Happy anniversary. <laughs> How many years? 31 years. Wow. Congratulations. Congratulations. This coming Friday. Oh, I got to see the nudge there as well. Happy birthday. <laughs> Excellent. So it'll be a big party there to come this week. No, just another number. Any other happenings? Well, I went to my trusty calendar, 
And I know that uh, Jensen Stead's birthday is today. So if you're watching, Jensen, happy birthday to you. And Howard and Jackie Lear's anniversary is coming this week. So they're celebrating an anniversary. Peter Singleton on the 27th is his birthday, so he's going to be celebrating. And uh, Sarah Weeks, I think, on the 28th is celebrating a birthday as well. So we do have lots of birthdays happening and lots of celebrations within our community. There was a person who journeyed this earth and he said the most magnificent things and wonderful things that really people's jaws dropped because they said, who is this person? Seemed to have a particular relationship with God that they had not seen, spoke to where people were. And so he gathered a following and then one day someone was wondering, who is he? And they asked him, and he said, I, I am the light. I am the light. And as the days shorten and the nights lengthen, we realize how important light is to us. And how we miss that light when it becomes less and less. In our faith in God and the love that surrounds us, that light never dims. The light follows us, is always with us. May we live in the light. Now let's take just a few moments to allow that light and the light of the world and the light of God find a place within our hearts to warm us and to hold us and cradle us in worship and beyond. From sunrise to sunset, with the wisdom of the aged and the energy of the young, in our work, in our homes, and in all that we do, let us praise the Lord with all our hearts. Our opening hymn. Oh, a song must rise.
with me in the prayer of approach. Good God, make yourself known among us. We lift our voices in song, our hearts in prayer, our minds in consideration, our lives in adoration towards you. We acknowledge that your spirit leads, comforts, and challenges us as we follow you. And with Jesus we share in this ancient prayer, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our psalm reading this morning is from Psalm 1. Please join me in the reading of Psalm 1. Blessed are those who do not follow the counsel of the wicked, or linger in the way of sinners, or sit down among those who mock. They are like trees planted beside streams of water, yielding their fruit in due season. As for the wicked, it is not so with them. Therefore, the wicked shall not be able to stand when judgment comes, nor sinners in the assembly of righteous. For God watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. Next hymn is uh, it's a song of praise to the Maker. We sing verses one and two before our time, our chit chat up here, and then the last two verses after. And it's one of those songs that I don't think we can stay seated for. So if you're able to stand, let's stand for the singing of this uh, this song, this hymn. It's a song of praise to the Maker. Song of praise to the
well, come on up and let's have a chat. Welcome. Good to see both of you this morning. Let's sit down. Uh, how are we doing? Are you all ready to go outside? It's going to be nice outside. I think the sun is even shining. I think the sun will be shining exactly where you go, but other areas might be rain. I don't think that'll happen. <laughs> well, it's good to see you. And I brought something here this morning. And what do you think? What do you think about this? A door. And what's the picture? About, what's interesting about the door? Two handles. Yeah, you can open. Yeah, two doors there. What else? Can you see in? You can see in. And what's what are those things here? Locks. Now, do you suppose those doors are locked? What do you think? Do you think they're locked? Locked? Yeah. And uh, what else do you? What else? Does it look inviting? Does it look like it's it's inviting? It does. What would make it more inviting? Put decorations up. What if, what if there was a decoration like that? Do you see what's there? The mat, that's right. And it's not just any old mat, is it? It's a welcome mat. So right there, what would make this door more welcoming? Do you think? If the door was open, would that be welcoming? And unlocked. And, unlocked? and what else would make it more welcoming? Say someone from the house who lives there. They could invite somebody. And maybe I wonder... I wonder if there was someone standing there and said, Hi, how are you? Welcome. Come in. Would that be good? Or would it be, mm, You kids, get off my porch. Which one would you like best? Welcome. That's right. That's right. So, I, I mean, they're nice big doors, big windows. But it would be nice with that nice big welcome mat if there was someone there saying, come in, you're welcome. Anybody, everybody, come on in. There's a big turkey dinner here, and now you can get something to eat. Or hot dogs, come on in, there's lots of hot dogs. Hot dogs. Jesus was talking to his friends, and they were walking somewhere, and guess what they were arguing about? They were saying, who's greatest among us? Who's the best person? And then Jesus, when got to where they were going, he sat down. He said, what were you talking about back there? And they were kind of sheepish because they didn't want him to know that they were taught what they were talking about. And then Jesus took a little child and sat on his knee and said, if you want to know God, then you've got to be like a little child. And really, when Jesus did that, Jesus said, really, all are welcome. Jesus wants everybody welcome. And so our church, the doors are open, and here we welcome everybody to come in and hang out and worship with us, to sing with us, to go to Sunday school, and hopefully have lots of fun. So when I think about God, I think about God who's welcoming. Like there's a big mat in God's kingdom which says welcome. And God hangs out outside and says, hey, come on in. Hang out with me. And it doesn't matter who we are. And that's something I think pretty special. Because we all want to feel welcomed. Do you want to feel welcomed? Do you like when you feel welcomed? Yeah. And what about loved? What, do you like feeling love? Yeah. 
And I think that God gives each of us uh, gifts to be able to love each other. And God says, I really love you too. So I hope you're going to enjoy this morning. And afterwards, hot dogs and some other things that we have out back. Or not, Some of the women have done some really cool stuff to make this happen. And we thank them. And uh, we'll hang out out there and uh, be able to chat. But I think there's something happening Something special happening as well. I think Kim planned something pretty special. So let's have a prayer. Thank you, God, for open doors. Thank you, God, for welcome mats. Thank you, God, for Jesus, who welcomes all of us as your children. Talk to you later, God. Amen. Thank you so much. Now you got to get something warm. Do you have your skidoo suits? No? Rubber boots? Oh, you got your sweater. So there we go. Have fun. Like the words of the psalm in Psalm 54, verse 6, we proclaim, with a free will offering, I will, I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, Holy One, for it is good. Let us give with the generosity of love made real, make, made available, and made free. Your morning offering will now be presented. pray together. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all the gifts we receive from you and pray you receive our gifts for your kingdom. May they be a blessing and gift in our extended community and the world. Amen. Janice Johnson. Please join me in the prayer of understanding. Let us pray. Shine the light of your word on the path ahead, O God. Help us choose the way of your wisdom so that we may bear fruit 
and that is pleasing to you and shines your light into the world around us. Amen. This morning I'm reading from Proverbs 31, verses 10 to 31, a tribute to a capable woman. A woman of strength, who can find? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She's like the ships of merchant. She brings her food from far away. She rises while it's still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it with the fruit of her hands. She plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She's not afraid for her household when it snows, for all her household are clothed in crimson. She makes herself coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known at the city gates, taking his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She supplies the merchant with sashes. Strength and dignity are her clothing and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teachings of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy, her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share of the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the city gates. Let us continue to hear the Word of God as it's shared with us through our storyteller that we know as Mark. And I'm reading from chapter 9, verses 30 to 37. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, the Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they didn't understand what he was saying, and they were afraid to ask him. When they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? Well, they were silent. For on the way, they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. He sat down, and he called the twelve, and he said to them, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child, put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not only me, but the one who sent me. May these words and these thoughts find places in our hearts where we're both challenged and where we find hope. Amen.
Will you pray with me? Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength, our hope, and our salvation. Amen. So when was the last time you gathered as a group? You, made a, you might have had some company in or you were in an informal group talking and the discussion moved towards, well, who's the greatest in the group? When did you have that discussion lately? Maybe not. And maybe that would be a really good official board meeting topic, Roland. We can talk about that. At the, maybe we can put it on for that for, sun, uh, for our next... <laughs> yeah. It's a long pedestal to fall, so yeah. <laughs> it's not something we talk about, is it? It's really not something. It's so inappropriate. Who's greatest among us? It's, uh, and yet, I'm sure there are times when people look around any group and think, well, who has the power here? Who's the power broker within the group? Who's the one who's, who's, who's the most powerful? Who's the greatest here? And I bet my bottom dollar on this, that if you were to survey a congregation, our congregation today, or earlier today, and ask that question, it would not be a child who you or I would name as the greatest. Our scene from the Gospel has a group of weary disciples and Jesus on the road walking to Calpurnium. And as is the custom, when a group of people get together, they usually have a good yearn, a good discussion, a good conversation. The, the discussion that day centers around who is the greatest among them. Now, it seems to have created a little heated debate between the disciples. And when they arrive at Calpurnium, Jesus inquires, well, what was all the fuss happening there? What was going on? What were you talking about? And he's greeted with silence. No one says anything. Now, it's interesting, Jesus doesn't scold them. He doesn't tell them, you ought not to strive for greatness. He doesn't lay a guilt or shame trip on them about their ambitions. He doesn't go down that lane. He simply says that they ought to understand what true greatness entails. They need to have a clear vision, a clear picture of what constitutes greatness in the understanding of the teachings that Jesus was sharing and, his, and in His relationship with God. I'm sure many of you here remember Red Skeleton. Yes, 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 Red Skeleton. Well, Red Skeleton, well, his name was Richard Red Skeleton, was an American entertainer. And he had a national radio and television uh, shows from 1937 to 1971. And, of course, most of us will remember the television show, the Red, the Red Skeleton Show. And uh, he was quoted as saying this, which he said, I don't want to be called the greatest or one of the greatest. Let other guys claim to be the best. I just want to be known as a clown 
because to me, that's the height of my profession. It means you can do everything, sing, dance, and above all, above all, make people laugh. For Red Skelton, greatness came in, the, in his ability to make people laugh, and he did a good job at that. Now, for Jesus, real greatness comes in developing the attitude and the ability of people to serve those who are invisible, those in our society who are nameless, those who are invisible. Jesus says, if you want a place of honor, you must become a slave and serve others. Greatness, prestige, honor in this kingdom of God is given to those who make themselves the servant of those who have no power, those who are on the periphery of society, those whom the respectable, any respectable person could never, ever talk to, meet, or socialize with. We are told that during the conversation with the disciples, Jesus takes a child and places them on, uh, in the middle of them. Of course, the child represents all those who are weak and vulnerable in society. In Jesus' society, the child was probably the lowest person in society. The child is the metaphor for the poor, the dispossessed, and all those who are powerless and unable to stand for themselves. The true measure of greatness of faith, of a faith community, of a nation, of any people, is how they treat the weakest and the lowest among them. Jesus says, if you want a place of honor in the kingdom of God, go to those who have eyes to see the child, to see the invisible in our society. So who are the nobodies, the invisible in our world? I don't think we sit at Tim's sipping our coffee, identifying who those people or the nobodies are. I want to believe that there are no nobodies in our society. However, we don't have to give voice to those we deem as nobodies. Our actions will often speak louder than words of how we react and be about with people. The nobodies who have identified well will be people moving around our lives that we somehow really never see. Maybe it's the whole host of people who are living under the poverty line. Maybe it's the people who have to put up with living in less than desirable places because slum landlords are allowed to take advantage of the less fortunate in our society. Maybe it's the invisible elderly who have no family and live lonely lives in nursing homes. Maybe it's the young trans person who is struggling with a hostile, judging society. Maybe it's a refugee fleeing her homeland only to find hostilities and snobbery expressed in different ways, but certainly in unwelcoming ways. Maybe what Jesus is telling His disciples is part of the greatness is the ability to see those nobodies and to care for them. To put ourselves out there to be for and with people who are on the periphery of society. There are so many different paths to greatness as there are definitions about greatness. But Jesus wants His closest friends to know that if they want to talk about greatness in the kingdom of God of which Jesus speaks, in that kingdom, 
he is talking about the need to know the standard by which greatness is measured. If anyone wants a place of honor, you must become a slave and serve others. In the great scheme of life, I guess, we could say that we are all nobodies. But Jesus, but because Jesus in God drew near to us, God chose to care for us when we were nobodies. Through the many actions and examples of Jesus' life, we understand Jesus God who offers grace and love because while we were yet far off, God drew us in and redeemed us as God's people, as God's children. To live in the kingdom identified by Jesus is to know that we have been given more than we have ever deserved. And so we can give to those the gifts, so in turn we can give to those the gifts of recognition, the gifts of service, the gifts of love. It is only in that service of seeing the unseen, standing with the oppressed, giving voice to the voiceless, will we, the church, our society, find true greatness. We are all God's people. We are all children of God. And may we in turn look to each and every person around us and to all of God's creation not to be dominated, but to be welcomed, to be loved, to be cared for. And that begins, that began with Jesus and God coming to us. I believe the gifts of creation in each of us gives us the possibility and the resources to be God-like to all whom we meet. And in doing so, we share the love in which we have experienced. As we go forth, may we know that love. May we have eyes that are open to the needs around us. And may we respond with love, care, and hope. Amen. Let us pray. God of all people and places, we gather this day in this sanctuary in prayer, giving thanks that you are with us in all the situations that we experience in life. You bring us strength and courage when we are anxious or afraid. You provide wisdom and direction when we face choices and challenges. Thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness to us in our prayers. Enlarge our love and sharpen our vision so that we may serve the world you love more faithfully. We pray for those who dwell on the margins of the economy, facing the challenges of unemployment, financial insecurity, rising cost, food insecurity. Give leaders in government, business, and labor a mutual vision that reflects the value of your kingdom so that everyone has enough resources and respect to live well and wisely. We pray for all those facing famine or drought this year and for those who have lost everything through fire, storm, conflict. Bring support to those folk and those agencies who work to alleviate suffering and help them rebuild lives and communities. 
We give you thanks for those who work for peace and mercy in a world that seems so divided by bitter conflicts and for those who keep peace and lead negotiations in international disputes. Give them wisdom and perseverance. We remember those who face violence and persecution or discrimination daily. Send your spirit to protect the vulnerable and shame the, vic the vicious so that justice and well-being will prevail. We pray for teachers and students, educational administrators and support staff as another school year begins. We thank you for the gifts of education, for deepening insight into this ever-changing world and the ability to distinguish truth from error. Grant all those in education this year mutual respect and commitment to the shared venture of learning. Help each of us bring the benefits of our education to our life of faith and give us all a teachable spirit. We pray for all those struggling with pain and illness and loss this day. Those who struggle with disabilities and daunting diagnosis, stay by their side. Be with those who face death this day and those who weep for loved ones who have died. Unite us in love, whatever we are facing, and grant us the peace and the hope that you promised us in Christ Jesus. We journey, O oh God, this very mysterious un and unpredictable life, and in the midst of all that's going on, we pray, O oh God, that we might recognize your presence and recognize the possibilities that you give to us to make this world, make our communities a better, loving, caring, welcoming place. We ask all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our concluding hymn is Walk With Me. modification here. <laughs> I'm going to change the light.
light is not gone, it's just changed. The light continues to move out into our midst. It encircles us. It holds us. It clings to us. We absorb the light. We share the light. We go and we live in the light. May we keep that light very near to us in the dark moments and in the moments of light within our lives. May we always be aware of a presence that never lets us go, a light that never extinguishes. But it's never enough to just hold it for ourselves, recognizing that it is with us. It is our responsibility to let go and allow it to shine for others around us. So may you go into the world renewed and refreshed with humble and expectant peace to witness to the love of God, the joy of the community of faith, and the hope of new life always in the resurrected Christ. Go in peace, go in love, go in hope, go in God. Amen.